In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your very first AI agent. So when I first started exploring AI and agents in general, I was completely overwhelmed. So I mean, the idea, it sounded amazing, but I just didn't know where to begin. It kind of felt just like something only developers or engineers could do. But as I really just dug deeper, I kind of discovered that the barrier to entry is unbelievably low and anyone can build production level AI agents using the right tools and just a little bit of guidance. Now I'm at the point where I use agents every single day, whether that's to save time in my client's operations or even my own business. Really quick, before we get into the video, I just wanted to mention that if you're a business owner looking to implement AI agents and other custom AI solutions into your company to increase your bottom line, check out the link below to apply to work with us. And if you're looking to learn and do everything yourself, we have three more spots to work one-on-one -on -one directly with me. So whether you want to start your own AI automation agency and land clients or automate your business, I'll help you achieve your goals. You'll also get full access to my resources, templates, and in-depth tutorials. Now, what I've done is I've created kind of a roadmap of the kind of six pillars when it comes to building agents. And really anytime you're building any sort of agent, it can kind of just be broken down into these pillars. So first off, we have planning the agent. So this just consists of defining the purpose, goals, and core functionalities of your AI agent. Now, what I've done is I've kind of just put together an outline, you know, the pillars when it comes to building out these agents in kind of a framework that you should be following. What we're starting off with is planning the agent, arguably the most important aspect. This just consists of defining the purpose, the goals, and the core functionalities of your agent. From here, we'll move into building a prototype. So just creating a functional prototype of your agent, whether that's an MVP, you know, using no code tools like any and make.com. Then we're going to move into adding a backend for a data where we're going to explain why a backend is essential, how to set one up, you know, using beginner level friendly tools like Superbase. So we'll then get into creating a user interface. So just designing something where a user friendly interface that allows users to interact seamlessly with your agent. Lastly, we're going to test it, refine it and deploy and monitor it, of course. Now getting it into step number one, which is planning your agent. So before you do anything, it's super important to have a clear plan. So think of this step as setting the foundation of your AI agent. So without a solid plan, it's easy to get super lost or just waste time going in the wrong direction. We're just going to want you to find the purpose of this agent. So ask yourself, what do I want this agent to achieve? So just be as specific as possible. Like, is it to automate repetitive tasks like sending follow-up emails? Do you want it to analyze data and generate reports? Or maybe it's just answering questions based off of a specific data set or knowledge base, whatever. So really take some time, get a pen and paper, just write down these goals. So having clarity here will guide every decision that you make moving forward and it'll just save yourself a lot of time speaking from personal experience then we're just wanting to identify the key features so once you have your purpose just break it down into features like think of the agent as a collection of abilities that are working together so for instance if your goal is to automate customer support maybe if your features might just include responding to faqs connecting to a database maybe customer information and escalating complex queries to an actual human so if it's a data analysis agent, then some of the features could include importing data sets, running analytics, and generating visualizations. So I would highly recommend to just start small, focus on one or two essential features for your first versions. You can always expand later. Then we're going to want to actually choose the right tools. So I mean, your goals and features will influence the tools that you are going to be choosing. So I mean, here's just a few examples like N8N and Boysflow, make.com. So I mean, N8N, it's my choice of building AI agents in the back end. You know, I know a lot of people who use Pydantic who know how to code or maybe don't know how to code and they have Cursor um, help them write the code, whatever. So, I mean, N8N, I just think it's the best AI agent builder on the marketplace for no code people like me. So, I mean, this is just perfect for building workflows and integrating APIs without obviously having knowing how to code. And then voice flow, this is usually more so for like chatbots, really just getting clear and defining what you're going to need or what you could be using. You know, maybe I'll use Pinecone instead of Supabase as my vector database. You know, Pinecone allows for more scalable solutions, databases, I should say instead. So, I mean, just take a moment to explore these tools briefly to decide which one is going to align best with your project. And now that you've actually outlined your goals and chosen the right tools, we're then going to just take those ideas and turn them into something tangible. So let's move on to building out your prototype. So you got your plan in place. Now let's build out the prototype. And don't worry because this part is 
just about getting something functional up and running pretty quickly. So, I mean, you don't need to be perfect right away. Let me just be transparent about that. So number one, just set up your environment. So start by signing up for N8N, make.com, whichever you prefer. And once you're actually inside, just familiarize yourself with the interface. So, I mean, I have plenty of videos in the past going over N8N and a full tutorial on how to use just about everything in there and also make.com. So check those out if you haven't already. So, I mean, most platforms, they do use a visual workflow builder where you can just drag and connect nodes to define the actions. So it's relatively simple and not the hardest to kind of set up. But from here, we're just going to create a first workflow. So, I mean, just start with adding a trigger node and a trigger node, if you're not familiar, this is what starts the workflow. So, I mean, it could be a user sending a message or submitting a form that's going to kickstart the system, the project, the workflow. Then we're going to actually add an action node or module, whatever, whichever platform you're using. So, I mean, this could just fetch data from an API or database based on the input. So for instance, if a user asks like, what's the weather today? The action node could call a weather API and just retrieve the response. And then you'll want to add a response node. So I mean, the response node, this just sends a result back to the user. So whether it's a text, an email or a report. So that's really the core functions and the dynamic that goes into building a workflow and really everything that's occurring. And then from there, you'll just want to test the workflow. So run your prototype to see if everything's working as expected. If something breaks, then check your connections between the nodes and ensure that everything is just configured properly. Now that you do have a basic prototype working, the next step will be to give your agent a brain, adding the backend for data. So, I mean, for your agent to be truly useful, it needs to store and access data. And this can include maybe user inputs and queries, generated responses, or just information pulled from external sources. Now, why a backend really matters? Let's say you're building a chatbot. Without a backend, the bot can only handle one interaction at a time and it won't remember past conversations. Now with a backend, you can store conversation history to make interactions feel more natural, keep a knowledge base for answering complex questions, and also log analytics to improve performances over time. So this in NNN is just called the memory. Perhaps it would be best if I just frame it as memory instead of, you know, the back end. Anyways, what we're going to continue building out is something I'll say back end again, but uh, let's say with Superbase or Pinecone. Now Superbase particularly, this is just a no code database platform that makes this process pretty simple. So to sign up for an account and create a new project, you can define your database table. So for example, a user's table to store user IDs and preferences and a conversations table to log into interactions and then we'll have the knowledge base to hold the information that the agent can reference. We'll ultimately just want to integrate this database with your workflow in N8N. So I'm just going to be using N8N as the hypothetical backend visual builder, agent builder throughout this video instead of make.com or anything like that. But yeah, you'll just want to use a database node to kind of pull or push data to Superbase as needed. I have plenty of videos going over that in the past. So check those out. Now, here's an example of kind of something, I guess, to using this system with Superbase. So if a user is asking, what's my last order, then the agent in N8N, it can pull that information from the back end, Superbase, and respond instantly. And then from there, it can store a user's favorite setting, like preferred language or topics to just personalize the interactions a little bit more. Now that your agent has a solid back end, it's time to make it accessible to users. So let's just move on to creating a user-friendly interface. So yeah, with step number four, just creating a UI. So we're just going to focus on how users are actually going to interact with this agent. Why does the UI really matter? And to be transparent, I don't use a UI all the time when I'm implementing systems for my clients. It really depends on the scenario and this isn't always going to be applicable to you and sometimes it might be overkill. But anyways, why the UI generally matters is because you could think about how the users will interact with your agent. So I mean, if it's clunky or confusing, they won't use it even if the backend is flawless. So I mean, your UI just be simple and intuitive. It should allow the users to input queries or commands easily and display results clearly and attractively depending on the use case that you're building out. So I mean, if I'm building a Slack bot or I should say a Slack agent for a client, then obviously I don't want it to run into any issues. So I just want it to be as seamless and fluid as possible. So I mean, for building a UI, you could use things like VoiceFlow or any plenty of other tools. But I mean, VoiceFlow, it's just a drag and drop platform, which is pretty much designed for conversational interfaces. So here's kind of how you can get started with that in particular. Just create a new project and define your agent's entry points. So 
build like a welcome message. And then you could add from there just decision paths based on user inputs. For example, if a user asks for a report, you can direct them to the appropriate workflow or section. If they ask for a question or if they ask a question, then you could route them to your AI powered backend essentially. And then you'll just want to test the conversation flow to ensure that it's really feeling natural. And obviously I'm not going to be showing you how to build these agents out because I mean, as I mentioned, I have plenty of tutorials going over how you can actually build them. But now I just want to give you some example use cases. So let's say you're building an agent to automate customer service. Maybe your front end or your UI could include a test input for user inquiries, or maybe a chatbot style interface that just displays the responses, or maybe some buttons for quick actions like track my order or contact support or anything else. So I mean, from here, your agent should now have a solid foundation and a front end or just a UI. So I mean, the next step, naturally, it's going to be to test it, just to make sure it works reliably. So testing where you're just obviously making sure that your agent is going to be working as expected. And this is probably the most important and it's critical to ensure reliability and ensure that there's going to be user satisfaction when rolled into production. So just test the common scenarios, simulate some interactions to see how your agent performs. So for instance, can it handle multiple types of user inputs? Can it retrieve accurate data from the back end? And are there any delays or errors in processing? So with any end in particular, there's a lot of error handlers that you could set up. So definitely utilize those and capitalize on the tools that are given to you. So just be resourceful. So you'll also want to push your agents to its limits. So just try providing unexpected inputs to see how it responds, test scenarios where external systems fail, like an API outage perhaps. So what will you do in this instance? Because if you're rolling out into production for a 200 employee company, then it's probably going to be pretty pivotal that it's actually going to have these error handlers in the back end set up. So what I like to do is I prefer to work with my client. Yeah, the best way to probably explain this is whenever I'm building out a system for a client, I make it a very iterative approach to test it out with them. So I send over them the demo, kind of the version that we're at and have them provide any critiques and really just stress test it and see anything that they can provide because they're the experts and in their field and what they do. So it would be best to give it to them, allow them to play around with it and see how they can break it. So we can just create a even better system from that. So gathering feedback is so important and I can't stress that enough. And then from there, you're just wanting to iterate and improve. So just use the feedback, find the workflows, fix the bugs, add small enhancements, whatever. So this is really the key process to building solid agents. So, I mean, once your agent is tested, it's refined time for just the exciting part, which is deploying it so that others can actually use it, you know, just rolling it into production and shipping it. So if you're using a no code tool deployment, is pretty as simple as just generating a link or embedding the agent onto your website, depending on what you're doing. Or maybe it's an automation that you have to host on the client servers or your own servers, really define what you have to do and then just kind of reverse engineer from there. And you can do some research into, you know, how can I deploy this on my client server, whether they're using Azure or maybe Heroku, it's relatively simple. Then from there, you're just wanting to monitor the performance. So you can use plenty of different analytics tools to track the interactions, the errors and user satisfaction. And of course, from there, they'll just want to adjust the workflows based on real world usage patterns. So how are they using it? How can this be better? And, you know, just iterating from there. But anyways, that's really it. Pretty much my entire process when it comes to building these agents. And it's kind of hard to fit everything into just one concise roadmap or pillar because, you know, we have chatbot agents, we have process automation workflows where we're just streamlining different things and, you know, creating an agent for automating newsletters, stuff like that. So it takes a lot of different shapes and forms. So there is going to be some nuances, but yeah, these six steps will apply to really anything that you're going to be building. But yeah, I just wanted to share it with you guys in kind of a roadmap or structure that I typically follow. I'm building out a project, whether that's for internally and using it for my company or for my clients and actually rolling it into, you know, seven and eight figure companies. But yeah, that's really it guys. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you are a business looking to implement AI and automations to drive revenue and create operational leverage, then you can apply to work with us. Link is down below in the description. And if you're looking to build your own AI agency and land clients or just learn how to do everything yourself and automate your own business, then you can work one-on-one -on -one directly with me. We only have three more spots available. So you can check out the link down below in the description where you can apply to join that community. But anyways, appreciate you guys watching this video and I will see you in the next one.